Genesis chapter number 4, verse 1, the Bible said, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering. He grew fruit, vegetables, whatever, trees, fruit trees, and he, that was what he brought. So that's clear. Uh, and Abel also brought of the firstlings of the flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. That is, he didn't accept it. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, that is, if you bring the right offering, thou shalt be accepted. And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door, or the sin offering. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So he is, he is bringing uh, the, wrong, uh, the wrong offering, and sin is not atoned for. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. Came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. The Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it sh shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Uh, and we'll stop there. Heavenly Father, would you... Uh, would you bless the Word of God today and the thought today, and and uh, Lord, let it let it be applied to our hearts and lives. I pray for folks who, who uh, Lord, do not understand this um, basic concept of what brings forgiveness, and this principle that you laid out uh, for Adam and Eve that they fully understood uh, the blood sacrifice, and God help us to see. Uh, the 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 era in uh, bringing the wrong the wrong offering for sin. There may be someone here today or listening at home that's unsaved. Lord, it is your will. It is our desire that uh, folks come to you and be saved. Lord, uh, they're they're playing with their very soul. Uh, Lord, uh, not being ready to meet you. We never know when we're going to leave this world. And God, we. We urge uh, everyone to make sure that their heart is right and make sure that their way to heaven is God's way to heaven, the right way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Genesis is a book of beginnings. It records the uh, beginning of the universe, uh, the world, the sun, the moon, the stars, animal life, plant life, human life, and many other things. Uh, important things. The Bible says that God spoke things into existence and they uh, began to appear. God made Adam and then he took a rib from the side of Adam and he made woman and we've been in trouble ever since. So that was a joke. Y'all can laugh. Okay. <clears throat> it's, it's amazing how um, how basic this this whole concept of the offerings of the fruit of of uh, Cain and Abel one brought the, uh, the the correct sacrifice Abel brought the the correct sacrifice of the lamb and his brother brought the the uh, work of his hands in essence his sacrifice was the sacrifice of growing things and it's amazing how that persists today we had a book somehow had worked its way into the church and we're interested in true doctrine here and uh, so my wife said what is a, it was a storybook of children for children and my wife said and it was illustrated she said what is this a good one and I said I don't know let me look at Cain and Abel and I looked at the story of Cain and Abel and that 
illustrated book, and of course it showed, it said, you know, we need to do good, <laughs> we need to do good and live right and treat people right, and then we'll make it in heaven. I said, no, this ain't the right one. And so that was a pretty easy way to find out if that was good doctrine. And so this persists today. Most uh, Christian churches, well, all Christian churches, believe um, in some version of one of, one of these, one or two of these concepts of salvation by works, fruit that you grow, or fruit that you produce in your spiritual life, works. And the Bible clearly teaches us that we're not saved by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Now, of course, we're joking with Debbie. I should have clarified that. I'll clarify it now. Uh, that's a joke around here when you say to someone, so you're doing the best you can or you're working to get into heaven. Uh, she knows that. We know that. We don't work our way into heaven. It's only through the blood of Jesus. So that, that is the key to understanding. Now, you know, <clears throat> this might be a little embarrassing. We got any, oh, we got kitties here. I'll try to keep it on up and up. The Bible says that Adam knew his wife, Eve. This is important. Adam was, uh, of course, intimate with his, with his wife. And uh, one of the, the word know, of course, means that physical connection. But it also means, and, and actually is a literal translation of, a, of an intimate, uh, 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 emotional, uh, physical, psychological relationship with a human being. It has to do with more than the physical, and people are missing that today. Uh, I've met more people that had that lifestyle where they would go from one person to another person to another person, men and women, and it just le left them empty and hurting and needing uh, God to clarify what is right. So that word, when Adam knew his wife, it refers more to than just a physical a union, it has to do with understanding that person, how they think, how they act. And I've been working on it for 44 years, and every now and then my wife throws me a curve, and it just, of course, women, it, it just, who was it in that movie? What was it throw? Help me, Kylie. You know, reason and, ah, <laughs> you want to just understand women, take a man and, and just throw out uh Reason and accountability. That's a woman. That was, a, <clears throat> that was in a movie. I know Kylie knows that, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't help me with it. But so this has to do with with um, understanding things that you can't get in a casual physical relationship. You're not getting that whole person. You're not getting anything from that person that God intended in the right. Uh, relationship, how God made us, how God designed us for a man and woman to come together in marriage and get to intimately know how a person thinks. Now, it's, it's kind of humorous. We, we make jokes about things. I can tell when my wife, especially years ago, I, when she would uh, come home from work or come in from somewhere and she'd be walking across that floor in her high heels, I could listen to the sound of her walking and tell you what kind of mood she's in. <laughs> One glance. And sometimes we're sitting, she's got her recliner, I've got my recliner, and uh, I, every now and then I've got, got, got pretty good peripheral vision, and uh, she will glance over at me. And I know exactly what it means. It can mean a lot of things. But uh, I don't know that about you, I, but that woman I know pretty good, and, and she's evil. So, <laughs> we made her laugh. I love her. So, the, the, whole, the whole, if you want to get the most out of your life, if you want to get to heaven, you got to have God. Amen. If you want to get, you, if you want a relationship with God, a man and a woman, you want to be in a relationship that fulfills you the way God intended. It's not just marriage. That's a good start. But uh, it's more to it than that. But there's an intimacy there that the, the meeting of the minds as well as the body that God ordained. Amen. 
Got a few more amens on that. Better move on before I embarrass somebody or myself. <clears throat> so that's something that, that God designs. And so uh, Adam and Eve went through a, a lot. What happened? Well, Eve uh, was deceived by the serpent and took of the fruit. You believe that really happened? Yes, I do. I'll just, I'll just be an idiot, I guess. But uh, yes, I believe that really happened. I believe more of uh, I believe I'm more inclined to believe God's word than I am things I hear in the world. Because all of them don't agree for sure. But I know this works. And everything I've experienced about God I know to be true. I don't understand all the Bible. But I understand it after 40 years of salvation. I understand enough about the Bible to know, boy, God's got our number. He has got the number of the saint. He has got the number of the sinner. He knows us inside and out. And he describes us in the Bible, every one of us. Even the person who doesn't believe in God, God has said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God or, uh, you could say it like this, no God for me. <clears throat> so they understood, Adam and Eve clearly understood when they walked with God in the cool of the day and uh, when they sinned, God covered them with the skins of animals. Why? Because it required the blood of those animals. The animals had to die. And God covered their nakedness. And it represented the fact that they knew right from wrong. And they became sinners. God cast them out of the garden. <clears throat> now they're working by the sweat of their face. And they're, 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 it, it's a hard life to go from walking with God in the cool of the day and in the innocence that they had and then going to a life of toil and briars and thistles and, and opposition and, you know, the aggravation of, of uh, life, you know, we experience it today. You're driving through town, you've got all the lights green, and then there's that one. And when that happens, you're trapped for up to how long is it? A minute, two minutes, I don't know. Seems like an eternity. Uh, life is so hard. So, <clears throat> and here... Um, and make, I want to make this perfectly clear that Cain and Abel and Adam and Eve clearly knew and their parents sat them down and explained to them, we are offering this lamb as a blood sacrifice for the, for the atonement of our sins. It represents a, a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for our sins. So they understood. By the way, I, I was uh, when I first got saved, I remember taking my brother out to, uh, my, my oldest brother out to my pastor's house. He had him there about four hours. I felt sorry for him, but he uh, started in Genesis and pretty much went through Revelation. And he said, my brother Steve said, well, what, what exactly, what's your opinion of what the Bible's about? And Preacher Callahan said it's about Jesus. Jesus in Genesis, Jesus in Exodus, Jesus in Leviticus. This whole Bible is about Jesus. And it's a picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. It's a picture of the blood. So they clearly understood that. And they had been in the habit from children to go with their parents and offer up that lamb. They understood that. They had other offerings. When God would give to you, we believe in the tithe here. And so uh, we believe God gives to us and we give back to him. And if you don't, Art will get you. He's keeping up with that stuff. He'll be praying against you. But uh, people do pretty good here. We don't have to preach on that. They do really good. So uh, the, the sacrifice of the blood was made. They clearly understood it. They would offer other sacrifices, just like was taught in the Bible later on. They would offer a grain sacrifices and the fruit of their hands. That was okay. That represented something else. That represented the fact that, God, I acknowledge that you're taking care of me. That everything I have, the ability to make and do everything that I that I can do, and all the money and all the gifts that I can do myself came from the gift of God. So God's responsible. Opportunity comes from God. Uh, blessing instead of curse comes from God. And so God gives us that, and we give back to God. Now that was fine. He had been in a habit of making the blood sacrifice and uh, of the lamb that he got from his brother, 
because he was a tiller of the ground. He fed his, the, himself, he fed the family, and he did pretty good with it. Undoubtedly, he was pretty proud of it. Then he said, you know what? I don't really see the need of depending on my brother's lamb. I don't see the need of depending on the blood sacrifice. I think the sacrifice and what I went through Growing this fruit, planting this stuff, harvesting this stuff, I think that's enough sacrifice. God, if you want sacrifice, Lord knows I've sacrificed. And he says, I'm a pretty good guy. I don't hurt people. I don't do this. I don't do that. And there's some pretty good people in the world to a point. But listen, you got to get this. And this is just about a slap in the face to a religionist who's depending on their uh, pharisaical life to get them to heaven. God says, all of our righteousnesses, our good works, is as what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. What's that? Leper's rags that they would hang on the pole that would wipe their swords with. It's as filthy rags in the sight of God. That's when you give money to help people. That's when somebody's broke down and it's raining and you stop and pick them up and you go the extra mile and put their nasty wet dog in your car or your truck and take them somewhere. Uh -huh. You know, it, it, it's helping people. You find out they need a little money, you give them a little money. That's, that's a nice, God said, that's good, but it ain't good enough. It must be the blood of Jesus Christ is the starting point of all our sacrifice. We don't add to the blood. We don't help the blood. We don't keep ourselves saved after we trusted Christ as our Savior. So when we look at, at the life of, of uh, Cain and the murder of his brother, by the way, oh, that kitty's in here. They prop, they, he probably killed his brother the same way they killed the lamb. What a mess. Blood all over, blood in the ground. That's why he said, your brother's blood is crying to me. By the way, God sees every murder. Those that are found out, those that aren't, God's keeping a record. All the horrible things that people do, God's keeping an accurate record. And man will answer one day ultimately to the judge and won't be any plea bargains there, amen? amen. So we see that that the and, and by the way, this this is mentioned over in the book of, of Jude, the way of Cain. The way of Cain. And uh, it has to do with this thing of working your way into salvation and disrespecting the blood of Jesus Christ. It was characterized by an unbelieving heart. He didn't believe. He made a choice. You can be right in the midst of religion. There are preachers, kids that are unsaved. There are, there are folks in church, been in church, raised up in church, who have never, you never know it looking on the outside. You never know it talking to them. You being in church, and every now and then I meet somebody, say, oh, my so-and-so relative was, was a preacher. That's just going to make hell hotter for you. It really is. If you've got, if you know the way, God said it'd be better not to have known the way. If you're, I would hate to go uh, leave this world being unsaved from the Bible Belt in North Carolina. You get preached to all the time. You can't go anywhere and not get preached to. Hallelujah. And it's, it's everywhere. And there's places in this country, Indiana's like undoubtedly. I keep meeting some soul winners out of Indiana. I got to draw the conclusion, David. Hey, some, they some good Christians up there. Amen. I met too many of them that I have to characterize that. That place is a, is a, a, a Christian-producing area compared to a lot of places, amen? So uh, his heart is unbelieving. It won't help you to know the way and turn from it. Can I say this? God doesn't play. God doesn't plea bargain. God loves you. He goes so far in his grace and mercy. And here's the line. Here's the line. You cross that line, you're going to get it. You die without Jesus, you absolutely will spend eternity in hell. How stupid is that? 
I mean, really, how stupid is that? I do some stupid things sometimes. I'm not going to tell you what they are. And she ain't neither. But one thing I did right, 1976, I figured that thing out, I'm wait a minute. I remember a guy, remember Gomer? Old Gomer, we used to pick him up and take him to church, and he was a character. He was, he, his family was a, were potheads. His mom and dad, you talk about a family that got along? His mom and dad and him and his brother sat around, watched TV, ate, and smoked pot. That's all they did. Gone was a character. He came home one day. This is a true story. I work with him. Came home one day, come back to work the next day. He said, man, I don't know what I'm going to do, Brother John. I said, what He said, my family moved. I said, what do you mean? He said, I came home. They didn't tell me nothing. He said, I came home and the house was empty. Isn't that the funniest thing you ever heard? They were trying to tell him something. Oh, go on. I can't remember his last name, but I work with him, and he got saved at work. And we got him a Bible, and he had a lot of rough edges, and, and but I won't get into all that. But he got saved. I said, go on. I said, what was it? There's a lot of people witnessing there at work. I said, what was it that got you saved? And I don't know what rock group it was or who it was. And uh, y'all, some of y'all, Roberta would probably know, but uh, it was, it, he said in the song, they said, we're all going to hell. And he said, I've been listening to what you guys have been telling me and preaching to me. And he said, I got to thinking about that. And he said, I'm not. They might be, but I'm not. And he got saved at work. He's the only person that knows the exact, and I know that knows the exact spot because we had aisles. We had like uh, aisle one, section B, where we kept the, the building supplies. And I, you know, if that build, if that place is still there, I'd take the very spot where he got saved. <laughs> it showed him in the Bible how to get saved. Don't be a fool. You know, you may not be in a, you know, you might be a little bit better off person than, than Gomer was, but he sure had sense enough to get saved. Amen. Here's an unbelieving heart. It doesn't matter what someone else did or what your surroundings are. I had a guy, it's no lie, God just opened my eyes early on this thing. I had a guy I worked with, I worked at a large Celades company, and I talked to the guy, and he's really smart, and we were talking about the Bible, and he says, I love debating with cults. And he said, here's what I tell him. He said, I study the Bible. And, and I asked him, I said, now, when, when did you get saved? He said, I'm not saved. He said, I just like arguing. And that's exactly what he told me. He said, I just like arguing with these people because they're not right. I said, you're no better than they are. You, you, the blood is crying out from the ground. Jesus said you must be born again. It was characterized by, by an unbelieving heart. It was characterized by an unrepentant heart. You can be unsaved and in the midst of the things of God, or you can be unsaved and never heard it. God will bring it to you. God will bring the word to you. <clears throat> Sometimes folks are den in denial about how wrong they are. And you see the characteristics of, of unbelief in religion. And he was a religious person. We see Cain, he got angry with God and he, he was just wroth. I mean, he was just so angry that God rejected him. Do you know that when people that are in religion all their life, oh, I've been religious, I go to church, I do this. Listen, when they are confronted with the fact that their religion is no good without the blood of Jesus. You ever think about this? I hear folks say, well, so-and-so, you know, told me a long time ago. Well, you know, I had folks, my dear friend Lonnie LaFords, I miss Lonnie. I did two funerals for him. Remember that one before he died? And one after. And Lonnie 
would make the best, a little bit like Tim, he would make the best arguments. He had answers for everything. And they were so sincere. And, and I believed everything he said. And years later, I caught him in a major mistake. And he was with such vigor and such personality and such conviction would convince me that this was so and that was so. And then I found out it was all bull. <laughs> <coughs> There's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people that tell you things. You know, <clears throat> my dad said one time, he said, well, you just die and that's it. And I said, Dad, no. That might, that might ease your conviction. That was before he got saved. But I said, no, you don't die and that's it. You die and it's appointed the man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. Every one of us are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone that's saved, we're going to stand before God one day. And I'm going to be back to say, I told you. <laughs> told you. I know it. My brother used to say, I know it. It's going to happen. Just as real as we are here today, that's going to happen. Don't be stupid. I mean, why would you, why would you miss that? Makes no sense to me. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose your only soul? I've only gained half the world. But I wouldn't trade half the world for my soul. So, is characterized by an unrepentant heart. He had an ungodly heart. He saw truth, he looked at truth, and he rejected truth. The blood of Jesus Christ is the only way you're going to get to heaven. Why, preacher? Why do you keep preaching that? First of all, I like it. Makes me feel good. It's an absolute. It's something I did 40 years ago. I came to Christ. And the more I study the Bible, the more I hear the Bible preached, the more I read it, I know and I'm more convinced than ever that the blood of Jesus is the only way to get in. Amen. Your works won't do it. <clears throat> what a tragic ending. What a tragic way to, to have your life unravel. When the, when, the, when the answer is right before you, you know where the problem started and you know where our problem is today in our, in our country, in our society? We've lost, we fear the wrong things. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I'm, I'm a wise person. When not if you don't fear God, you've went off in the wrong direction. You've, you've, you've accumulated information that is not valid because it's not based on truth. The beginning of fear. Why wouldn't we fear God who's able to destroy both body and soul in hell? Fear, don't fear man. He says fear God. God who made us. Well, I don't like it. You see that guy's car got hit by that train. He survived. I mean it just hit it and then ran over. It looked like the back half. I'm sure he didn't like that. I'm sure he may have shouted at that train, don't you run over me. You run over me and you'll be sorry. Guess what that train did? You can't stop God. You can put God out of your mind. You can become delusional. But when you're confronted with truth, truth will reveal itself. He lost the fear of God. He lost the favor of God. God said, I'm not going to accept that. Oh, but God, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, you the good works that we do, humanitarian things. We reach out. You got the blood? You got something. Amen. You don't got the blood? You got nothing. Nothing without Jesus. He's given an opportunity to bring the sin offering. It's the way of Cain. It's a philosophy. It's a religious philosophy. It's an attitude of life. I was taught that in the First Methodist Church. I was taught that would do the best you can and 
keep the golden rule. And I'm like, what now? Look back. What Bible were you reading from? The Bible doesn't teach that. Can you imagine having a textbook in school and going off script? I mean, really? You know? First president wasn't George Washington. Nope. And then we may come to that eventually, but... He lost his fear. He lost the favor of God. God won't accept anything. You don't have to be Baptist, but it helps. You better get born again, folks. This today, this what I've said today, even with my cold, been pretty good. What I've said today, you're going to answer for. If you're listening at home, you're going to answer for that. You can do whatever you want. God's not going to make you do it. You do whatever you want to do, but I promise you, at the judgment, you're going to hear this again. And God's going to say, I gave you the word. I love that song. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not cucumbers, not pumpkins, not turnips, not the best. I got some tomato seeds. Every year I order tomato seeds thinking they're black tomatoes. Pretty cool. Purplish black. I, I love them. They ain't in the ground. They ain't started. They ain't nothing. But if I had the prettiest tomatoes in the world and cucumbers and everything else, it wouldn't be enough. You all right back there, Jay? If I get too loud, just I'm almost done. Go on back to sleep, brother. You're fine. <laughs> Oh, he made a mistake. He knew the truth. It wasn't a stranger to him. He knew the truth. How long, dear Lord, are you going to wait before you come to Christ? I mean, really? You know what the Holy Spirit sounds like? You know, I'm going to tell you one thing I know that I know. You people debate whether this is true, that's true. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, I, I haven't been in church in years, but when he called my name, when I heard that preacher preaching, it, did, it connected with something deep in me where there was no doubt whatsoever that God was speaking. And you know when God's speaking. Enough said. What are you going to do about it? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Brother Gabe, come on up here and sing us a verse or two. Wouldn't you like to come to Christ? Or you just want to go on your own and see how that works out? I wonder if there's anybody here today say, Preacher, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to get saved. I want to come to Jesus Christ. I want to trust him as my personal Savior. Do you have enough faith and courage to raise your hand? We'll get Brother David to take you back, as we've done many others, back in the kitchen and privately show you in the Bible how to be saved. Would you like to do that, or would you just want to keep trying to make maybe you'll be okay? All right, let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you know for us, for the, for the privilege to be here today, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice you made for our sins. I pray that if there's anyone that's here that's not saved, Lord, that you will convict their hearts and uh, show them their need for you, Lord, and show them that this, this life is, is worthless without you. Um, to live and die without you, Lord, would be, would be worthless. God, I pray that you would just uh, convict their hearts and not let this leave them. Uh, help them to think about this until they turn to you, Lord. And I pray that they would just accept uh, the simple gift of salvation, just to ask you into their heart. Even if they don't understand uh, exactly what they need to do in their Christian walk, Lord, just take the first step towards you. Uh, I pray that you would help us as Christians to pray for the lost, to witness to them, uh, to bring people to you. And I pray that you would bless the rest of the day and bring us back safely this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.